In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We often talk of heaven in church. We say, Our Father in heaven, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven is central to our faith, yet we can feel ambivalent about it. Do we really believe that there is somewhere beyond the sky where the angels and saints live in splendor? A place we hope to go when we die, a place of everlasting life, delight and peace. Is this not mere wish fulfillment? Our uneasiness intensifies with all the caricatures that exist, whether it be plump cherubs sitting on clouds playing harps, or fantastical alternative realities that cater to our every whim. We are right to reject these images. They suffer from a lack of imagination. They are mor morally questionable too. In a world full of suffering, to talk about an otherworldly paradise smacks of escapism. If we must use the word, isn't heaven something we discover in the world? Are we not to find heaven in human dignity, the common good, or as William Blake says, in a wild flower? By all accounts, many people seem to have gained a keener sense of heaven in the ordinary during this time of crisis. With the plight of so many people confronting us each day, we have become aware of how precious human life and society are. Within the strictures of lockdown, we have come to appreciate the simple things we take for granted. Having a conversation face to face, hugging and holding those we love, taking a walk in the countryside, the kindness of neighbors and strangers, the dedication of countless people helping others, even the life of prayer and worship. Has not heaven come near in these things? The Feast of the Ascension, which we celebrate today, affirms precisely the nearness of heaven. In fact, the Ascension radically transforms our understanding of the relationship between heaven and earth, God and humanity. At first blush, however, the accounts of the Ascension in the Acts of the Apostles and in our Gospel seem cartoonish. Jesus is lifted up in the sky and disappears on a cloud. But let us not trip over our own sophistication when confronted with the deceptively simple imagery of scripture. For these passages echo with ancient Old Testament resonance. To be lifted up on high points not to a magical journey, but to how Jesus, in his crucified and resurrected humanity, is enthroned in the presence of God and given authority over all things. And the reference to the cloud speaks of both the nearness and the inexhaustible mystery of God, as it did atop Mount Sinai and above the tent of the covenant in the wilderness. Like the first disciples, we might think of Jesus' ascent as a physical movement from one place on earth to another place, heaven. The scriptural texts, however, challenge this. The passage from Acts does this rather comically. Two angels suddenly appear and ask the disciples, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? As if to say, do you not realize you are already in heaven with Christ, already with the angels. And in the gospel, even as Jesus withdraws from the disciples, he comes closer by blessing them. Rather than departing, Jesus has become the intimate and blessed medium in which they live and move and have their being. This explains why at Jesus' withdrawal, the disciples respond not with sorrow, but great joy. With them, the ascension invites us to let our hearts and minds be raised to a higher level of reality, one hidden at the heart of our earthly existence. 
as the early church put it, Jesus did not leave heaven when he came down to us, nor did he withdraw from us when he went up again into heaven. Jesus was in heaven all the while he was on earth, and now we too are in heaven with him, as we await the time when heaven and earth will be fully united in him. What then does the ascension say about heaven? It's not a fantastical place beyond our galaxy. Heaven is altogether more radical. Heaven means humanity at home in God forever. As one present day theologian puts it, heaven is not a place, but a person. The person of Jesus, in whom God and humanity are forever one. Like the first disciples, we must not remain transfixed by the abyss above, nor are we to live simply in the hope of a better future while ignoring the present. Rather, the ascension reveals that we ascend into heaven insofar as we enter into intimate communion with Jesus in our daily existence with others. Through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we must venture out of our lockdowns and bear witness to the earthy feel of heaven by becoming ever more human. We must let our hearts and minds and so our whole existence be lifted up and outward in the service of the highest reality, the reality of heaven, of being a person living in communion with others and God in endless love. In this task, Jesus offers us the never ending gift of his presence. And while Jesus, the face of heaven is always present to us, he desires to become ever more fully present in our interactions. Precisely because he, became, he came to live among us and as one of us, overcame death with love and burst the confines of the material world, he has the power now to give himself in all places, at all times, in a humanly recognizable way. Indeed, Jesus has promised to give himself to us and keep us in heaven, above all in the life of the church, in the sacraments, the words of scripture, the hearts of those who pray, those who live out a faithful commitment to others, and in all that is beautiful and true in human culture and the natural world. And so, even as darkness threatens, in Jesus crucified, risen and ascended, we need not fear. For in our mundane activities, we will suddenly find ourselves liberated by the presence of an unfailing love, already across the threshold of heaven, hearing the chorus of angels and saints, glimpsing the faces of our loved ones gone before, and rejoicing that each creature on earth shimmers with the abundant blessings of the God whose home is among mortals. Let us therefore live, work and pray for his kingdom to come on earth as in heaven. Amen.